the Barong Tagalog is an embroidered formal dress from the Philippines. It is very lightweight and worn and tucked, over an undershirt. In lowland Christian Filipino culture it is common formal attire, especially at weddings, and is mostly worn by men. The Barong Tagalog was popularized as formal wear by President Rama Q. Den Magzese, who wore it to most private and state functions, including his own inauguration. Etymology The word barong is a coined word that comes from the Filipino word bayra meaning outfit. Similar to the Malaysian baju which translates to dress. The term barong tagalog literally means tagalog dress in Filipino. The term was originally used to describe what people, both men and women, typically wore in the tagalog region during the Spanish era. In time, the term caught on with the shirt alone and the other styles of dresses got their own names. The term Barong Tagalog has been for so long been shortened by native Filipino speakers into Barong. Grammatically, Barong is not a word that can stand alone. It has a suffix ng, which implies that a word that an adjective, or a word that modifies it must directly follow. The root word of Barong is Bera. History, pre-colonial era, prior to the Spanish era, the Tagalogs of Luzon already wore a garment that was a forerunner of the Barong Tagalog, the Beira. Earliest reference to the Beira was in the historical account of Maai that the Tagalogs wore a sleeve doublet of rough cotton cloth called Kanga, reaching slightly below the waist. It was collarless and had an opening in front. The doublets indicated the social status and badge of courage of a man, red was for the chiefs and the bravest, black and white for the ordinary citizen. Their loins were covered with colored bahag between legs to mid-thigh. In contrast, the Visons wore clothes similar to that of Indonesians and Malaysians. They wore a robe called malota or jacket called bakaru without a collar that reached the feet. The robes or jackets were brightly colored. The Tagalogs and the Visons bound their foreheads and temples with long, narrow strips of cloth called patong. Necks were covered with gold necklaces and wrists with golden armlets called kalom biggers, these had intricate patterns. Others would wear precious stones. Spanish Colonial Era A legend persists that the Spanish colonizers forced the Tagalogs to wear their bayra with the shirt tails hanging out to distinguish them from the ruling class. Its translucent fabric allegedly showed that wearer was not concealing a weapon underneath. Supposedly, native Filipinos were also prohibited from tucking in their shirts, which served to designate their low rank as well as to distinguish them from the people of mixed descent, the mestizaji, and the colony-born pure Castilians or insulars. This is only a legend, as pre-Hispanic Filipinos already wore untucked shirts, something common in tropical climates where temperatures and humidity are high. Moreover, sociologists have argued against this theory by pointing out that an untucked style was very common in pre-colonial South and Southeast Asian countries and that the use of thin, translucent fabric developed naturally given the heat and humidity of the Philippines. Historians have likewise noted the absence of citations to any specific law in which that bans the tucking in their shirts. They also note that natives during the colonial era wore their shirts tucked at times. A common example cited in support of this argument is Joseph Copyright Rizal and his contemporaries, who were photographed in Western clothing with their shirts tucked. Like other cultural clothes, the style of the Barong Tagalog and the accessories worn with it spoke of the status of the person wearing it. The Mestizos would wear it with their leather shoes and bowler hat. The Ilustrados wore a beca made bearer with plain collar, half open chest, and pleated back design. The Ilustrados wore it with ordinary shoes, trousers, and a hat, similar to that of Mestizos. The bearer was worn over a camisa de chino. The lower class wore colored camisa de chino with loose pants and slippers which is still a practice in the countryside. American colonial period, post-colonial. Present time, today, the Barong Tagalog is used as uniform in schools, universities and offices. Through the years, it has occasionally been feminized and worn by women. This may be seen either as an egalitarian or haute couture fashion statement, or as a form of power dressing when worn by female politicians such as President Karazin Aquino, who has worn it at various times during her rule. Relation to the Guayabra, 
Another disputed theory is whether the Barong Tagalog was a local adaptation or a precursor to the Guayabra, a shirt popular in Latin American communities. According to those who claim that the Beira is the precursor of the Guayabra, the Guayabra shirt was originally called the Filipina since Manila Acapulco galleons brought the shirt to Mexico from the Philippines. Types of cloth used, the finest shirts are made from a variety of indigenous fabrics. They have a sheer appearance and the best are custom embroidered in delicate folk patterns a pier plus or minus a fabric is hand loomed from pineapple leaf fibers. Traditional pier plus or minus a weavers in the country, however, are dwindling, making the delicate pier plus or minus a cloth expensive and highly prized. They are used only for very formal events. Juicy fabric is mechanically woven and was once made from a beka or banana silk. Banana fabric is another sheer fabric used in formal occasions. It comes from the Visayan island of Negros. Hand woven from banana fiber, the embroidery on this type is usually of a geometric design. Variations The term barong tagalog is almost exclusively used to refer to the formal version of the barong. However, less formal versions also exist. Polo barong refers to a short sleeved version of the barong often made with linen, ramy or cotton. This is the least formal version of the barong and is frequently used as men's office wear. Guza cubed t mayaman and linen barong are any barong not made of pier plus or minus a, juicy, or similarly delicate fabrics. These are generally considered less formal than the barong tagalog, and is also a reserved for everyday office wear. Shirt jack barong are cut in shirt jack style usually made of polyester cotton, linen cotton and the typical Guza cubed t and fabrics. Popularized by politicians wearing it during campaigns or field assignments, this style gives the wearer a look between casual and dressed up. This type is however considered inappropriate for very formal occasions such as weddings. Decorative details, barong are commonly embroidered along the front in a U shape, with small spots placed everywhere else. This is usually produced by any of the following methods, hand embroidery, machine embroidery, computerized embroidery, hand painting, pin pricks, lace inserts applica copyright, collado, controversy. At the 2007 Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Sydney, Australia, a press release from the organizing committee described the Barong Tagalog as a peasant shirt. The government of the Philippines called for clarifications regarding the description, considering the potentially derogatory connotations of the term peasant. See also, Barat Sire, references.